Bony fingers clutched her wrist. Instinctively, Doreen yanked her arm away. But to her surprise, the old woman hung on. With a shuffle of rags, the woman moved closer. Brownie's a good dog. The harsh voice was thick with spittle. He knows. He's a good dog. Doreen broke the woman's grip. I... I must be going. The woman did not resist. Her arm vanished under her blanket's folds. Doreen backed her way into the open door of the train, her eyes still on the old woman. Left alone, the woman seemed to recede into her rags and tormented dreams. Doreen found the pup's eyes staring back at her. As the train doors closed, Doreen heard the homeless woman muttering, Brownie, he knows, he knows we're all gonna die today. 1.55 p.m. PST 11.55 a.m. local time, Aleutian Islands, Alaska. On the morning of the eclipse, Jimmy Pomaatuk worked his way up the icy slope with practiced care. His dog Nanook trotted a few paces up the trail. The large Malamute knew the trail well, but, always the loyal companion, he still kept wary watch for his master. Trudging after the old dog, Jimmy led a trio of English tourists, two men and a woman, toward the summit of Glacial Point atop Fox Island. The view from there was spectacular. His Inuit forefathers had come to the same spot to worship the great Orca, building wooden totems and casting worship stones off the cliffs into the sea. His great-grandfather had been the first to take him as a boy to this sacred spot. That had been almost thirty years ago. Now the spot was listed on countless tour maps, and the Zodiac boats from the various cruise lines offloaded their human cargo onto the docks of the picturesque village of Port Royson. In addition to the quaint port, the other prime attraction to the island was the cliffs of Glacial Point. On a clear day like today, the entire Aleutian chain of islands could be seen spreading in an infinite arc. It was a site considered priceless to his ancestors, but to the modern world, it was forty dollars a head off-season, sixty dollars during the warmer months. "'How much bloody further is this place?' a voice behind him said. "'I'm freezing my ass off here.' Jimmy turned. He had warned the trio that the temperature would grow colder as they neared the summit. The group was outfitted in matching Eddie Bauer coats, gloves, and boots. Not a stitch of their expensive outwear showed any use. A price tag still dangled from the back of the woman's parka. Pointing an arm toward where his dog had just vanished, Jimmy nodded. It's just over the next rise. Five minutes. There's a warming shack there. The complainer checked his watch and grunted. Jimmy rolled his eyes and continued his march up the hill. If it weren't for the tip as their guide, he'd be tempted to heave the whole lot of them over the cliffs, a sacrifice to the ocean gods of his ancestors. But instead, like always, he just trudged onward, reaching the summit at last. Behind him, he heard gasps from the trio. The view had that effect on most people. Jimmy turned to give them his usual speech about the significance of this site, but he found his companion's attention was not on the spectacular views, but on their hurried attempts to wrap every square inch of exposed flesh from the mild winds. "'It's so cold,' the second man said. "'I hope my camera lens doesn't shatter. I'd hate to have trekked all the way up to this cursed place and have nothing to show for it.' Jimmy's fingers clenched into a fist. He forced his tone to an even level. "'The warming shack is nestled among that group of black pines. Why don't you all go on in?' We've got a bit of a wait before the eclipse. Thank God, the woman said. She leaned into the man who had first complained. Let's hurry, Reggie. Now it was Jimmy's turn to follow. The English trio raced toward the scraggled copse of pines protected in a hollow. As he marched, Nanook joined him, nosing his hand for a scratch behind the ear. Good boy, Nanook, he mumbled. Ahead, Jimmy's gaze caught on the trail of smoke in the blue sky. At least his son had completed his chores and set the coals this morning before leaving for the mainland, off to celebrate the coming eclipse with friends. For the oddest moment, a melancholy wave washed over Jimmy at the thought of his only son. He couldn't identify why the sudden mood overwhelmed him. He shook his head. This place had that effect on him. There always seemed a presence here. Maybe the gods of my forefathers, he thought, only half-jokingly. Jimmy continued his way toward the warmth of the shack, suddenly wanting to escape the cold as much as the tourists had. His eyes followed the smoke trail up to the sun near the eastern horizon. An eclipse. What his ancestors described as a whale eating the sun. It was due to occur in the next few hours. At his side, Nanook suddenly growled.